All right, guys, and now we're going to talk about maneuvering and improving pieces in chess. So first, we take out all the pieces and make sure we're fully developed. But afterwards, what do we do and how do we start a plan with bad pieces? Well, we can't. So first, we have to make those pieces better and then we can go about either hunting down opponents' weaknesses or checkmating their king. I call it giving a chocolate bar to all of our pieces starting with the worst ones so let's take a look at this example which was a game played by a grandmaster Nepomniachian who was white and he's a super grandmaster uh, he's playing at this level for a very long time and he knows what he's doing let's see how he makes this position for white into an almost winning one in a matter of let's say 20 moves or so so right now his pieces are not amazing, they're alright, I mean that rook on a1 leaves a lot to be desired and that bishop on g2, I mean stuck staring at a pawn, it's like staring at a wall and trying to do something, it's impossible. So we have to improve the pieces first before we attack anything. So he starts off with the rook on e1 and he says, oh, let's improve it, let's put it on the second rank. Now I'm defending the picnic table, making sure this, this pawn is safe so that black can never get it later on when the uh, black rook comes to c8. And later on that leaves the queen free to either attack a5 or to maneuver elsewhere. And we gave this rook the chocolate bar, this move. We can only give one chocolate bar a turn, that's how chess works. I wish I could make all my pieces good right away, play something like c3, Queen, queen to d4, uh, rook to d1, bishop to f1, rook to d2, but sometimes it takes longer than that. As long as the position isn't open and it's a closed or semi-closed position, we can take more time and slowly but surely improve our pieces. Let's see how Jan, the super grandmaster, does so in this game. Black tries to defend the e4 pawn, so now it's really a big wall in the bishop's way, but it doesn't matter for white because he'll just keep on improving his pieces. Now that the c2 pawn is defended, he makes the queen better, uh, makes sure that the rook isn't feeling too comfortable, and blockades his pawn so it doesn't go any further. We don't want these pawns going down there, no sir. So instead we just blockade them and we also give the queen a chocolate bar because now it's better placed than before. It has greater scope, it's looking all over the place. So black goes back and we go forward. Now the worst piece is brought into the game. It has a job now to attack the d5 pawn, which keeps the knight at bay. So the knight can't go to where it wants to go, like e5 or an, any more dangerous squares. Instead, it has to babysit the pawn on d5. So we gave the rook at the chocolate bar. Let's see who's next. Now the rook comes here. Well, the pawn needs some defending, so I guess we'll give the pawn uh, the bar, the chocolate bar in this turn because sometimes we also have to improve pawns if we feel that they're weak or we can do something with them like attack the opponent's pawns or if all our pieces are perfectly placed like they are now then we can start pushing pawns uh, and advancing to attack so let's see black also pushes his pawn because he wants to freeze these guys so he can attack them with his rooks and his major pieces and now we ask ourselves Okay, can we attack this pawn on e4, or I should say on a4, and how can we do so with two pieces, because right now we only have a queen. Okay, who else can attack the pawn? I know, why don't we bring the rook to b4, and then put the queen back to d4, and then we'll have two attackers, one on b4 and one on d4. So first we take away the queen so we can give the rook the chocolate bar next move. And now we attack the a4 pawn. Let's see what's next. Rook comes to c4, tries to stop us. Good for them. We'll just bring in the other rook. So black trades. You see, we can't take with this rook now because otherwise they will take our b2 pawn and the picnic table becomes weak. So instead we have to take with the queen, but once again backwards pawn and an isolated pawn on a4. Black defends the pawn, no problem. We had a bad bishop all this time, so the only way we could make it better is by taking it out on this diagonal. 
it wasn't doing anything here anyways because of this blockade of d5 and e4. Uh, we could have tried to play f3, but then the king would be too open. So white just says, let's keep those pawns there and let's bring the bishop to a nicer place, to better grounds. So it can actually be used for something useful, okay? Black tries to get some counterplay with e3, but we blockade that. So we say, nope, I like your pawns exactly where we are. And so once again, the queen goes back to e3 just to stop this rook from becoming any better, from being maximized, right? And so now this knight actually gets some freedom and it's dreaming of nice squares such as f3, d3, or c4, but that's all right because now we attack the other weakness and make our bishop better once again. They have to defend it and now we bring in our rook we attack the weakness again and in the future we're thinking rook b4 queen d4 once again we're improving all our pieces we're maximizing them making them so good the best they can be okay black has to protect it so he has to once again put the knight to a passive position it doesn't want to go there but it has to if the queen doesn't want to be tied, tied down to a4 and now First of all, we fix the pawns to make sure that black never dreams of any kingside attack, because we wouldn't want that. And after the pawns are fixed, we can improve our last piece. So guys, let's see. The rook is awesome. The queen is amazing, blockading all those pawns. The bishop has no better place but e2. And now we just have one guy, one piece that needs improving. If you guessed the king, you're totally right. So we go about bringing him to a better place. And you guys will say, but he's already safe where he is and he has a roof. But this rook, this roof I should say, is overextended. It's a bit far. It's further than we want. If white is going to attack this king, especially with some kind of pawn storm, with some g4 idea later on, opening up black's king, then his king definitely can't be on the king's side. So we have to castle the other way. And slowly but surely, we get to b1 and then a2. Because we need to make sure our king is safe before we attack theirs. Okay? In this manner, every single piece is made perfect before any attack takes place. Right? It takes a while. It takes them a few dozen moves perhaps but at the end when he gets there he gets a winning position and all those moves were pretty easy it's just improving 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 giving everybody chocolate bars so they can become better pieces let's see how this turned out in the end king f1 king e1 we're just going to the queen side where it will be safer rook to c6 no problem king d1 nobody's stopping us oh by the way let's bring the queen in so maybe we can get rid of that annoying knight and win this pawn in the future. So also this rook is tied down to the, to the defense of that knight. And when they are tied down to the knight, we can slowly bring in our king. We can maximize our queen because now she can see both ways. We don't need to block this pawn anymore because it's not going anywhere, right? Rook back to e6, no problem. We go back because they were threatening e3. And now after queen to d6, let's finish that king walk, eh? The queen goes back to c7 because black is just waiting. They have no way to improve their position, but white does. White first puts the king on a2 and then slowly but surely gets busy on the king side, all right? And after rook c6, queen d4, the rook goes back and white decides Maybe I'll just take that pawn. That's your weakness, so that's what I'll take. And black doesn't have enough defenders to cover that pawn anymore because we have one, two, three pieces and they only have one knight and perhaps uh, some queen, but that's not gonna do the trick. So at this point, black gets desperate and starts throwing away uh, other pawns just to create some hope of counterplay, but they still can't even take our pawn because their knight is hanging. So it's a really sad position for black. 
And now we make sure all our pieces are great once again. The bishop is great on this diagonal, pinning this pawn. And slowly but surely, now we put the bishop here so that he covers the c4 square from the knight. Right? And we can take our time. We don't have to hurry. And now black is running out of moves because it's hard to defend this weakness and this weakness at the same time. White's pieces are just dominating at this point. Everything is protected because black can't take any of those pawns. And white's strategy has been a success. So guys, that's how we give chocolate bars and how we make our pieces better. Remember, take your worst piece and make it better if you're not sure about what to do, okay? And if you have two pieces which all need improving, think of which one is more important. Which one needs the chocolate bar more? Okay, guys, hopefully you can improve your pieces in your games and make them as good, if not better, than Nepomnichi in this game.